This is part three in our series of lectures on section 1.4. In this video we're going to give our first example of a direct proof. We're going to make use of the techniques that we've developed in the previous two videos in order to write that proof. And we're going to illustrate with this particular proposition, let x and y be integers. If x and y are odd, then x plus y is even. So note, first of all, that the implication here is that no matter which integers x and y we use, as long as they're odd, then the sum has to be even. And so that means the variables x and y must be universally quantified. So the very first step in coming up with a formal proof of this statement is to write the statement in symbols. And so if we do that, we get the following. For all integers x and y, if x is odd and y is odd, then x plus y is even. So this is exactly the kind of proposition that we discussed um, two videos ago, where we gave the idea of the, how, the structure of how to write the proof. So remember we showed there that the first sentence of the proof should be, uh, let x and y be integers. The sec second sentence should be, suppose that x is odd and y is odd. And the very last sentence of the proof should be something like, therefore x plus y is even. We have to figure out a way of linking the second and last sentences using a, a sequence of logical statements. Now, even though the proof has to be written as a sequence of logical statements, each one following from uh, previously stated things, it doesn't mean we come up with the proof in a strictly logical way. Sometimes it's really useful to work backwards from what it is we're trying to get to. So in order to organize our thought process in coming up with this sequence of steps, I'm going to introduce a certain table that I call proof table. This is what the proof table is going to look like. It's going to consist of two columns. Each row of the table will uh, describe a particular step in the proof. The first column will tell us what we know about that step, and the second column will tell us the reason that we know it. So let's look at the statement again, and I like to look at it in symbols. So the very first thing that we should write on the table is um, write the assumption that the hypothesis is true. So we're going to write that in the first column, and the reason that it's true is that it is the hypothesis. The second thing that we add to the table comes from the conclusion here, so we're going to indicate that, and that's going to be the very last thing that shows up in the table. But I can't fill this one in yet because I don't really know why I'm going to be able to assert that x plus y is even. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to work backwards from this step here, and I'm going to say, um, well, I'm going to ask myself the question, what do I need to know about x plus y in order to assert that it is even? And so for that purpose, I go back to my working definition of even, and I insert here what it means to say that x plus y is even. So to say that x plus y is even is to say that there exists an integer m such that x plus y is equal to 2 times m. I can't fill this in yet because I don't know why I can assert this. But once I write this, that gives me the reason for this step. It's just the definition of even. Now let's go back here and fill in, using the working definition of odd, what it means to say that x and y are both odd. I'm going to put that here, and the reason will be because of the definition of odd. Notice that in writing these definitions for x and y being odd, I've used different letter names. I've called them R and S. You have to use different names because x and y are different objects that really have no connection between each other. Now, can we see how to link this step and this step? Well, we're trying to make a statement here about x plus y, and we have statements here about x and y separately, so maybe we should just simply add these two together. So we'll do that on the next line. 
Now, was that a useful thing for me to do? Does that help me to link this step with this step? Well, if I combine these terms, you see my aim is to write x plus y as two times something. So if you combine all of these terms, uh, you see you get 2r plus 2s, and this is 2, so I can factor a 2 out um, and get the following. And the reason that I get that is just elementary algebra. I combined terms and I factored out a 2. Well, now you see we can go directly from here to here just by replacing this m by r plus s plus 1, which is itself an integer. So now I know the reason for this step. It's just simply the definition. Um, it's just simply the uh, substitution of this m for r plus s plus 1. And so we now have the complete table. It lists all of the steps of the proof. And when we write up the proof, we're going to proceed from top to bottom so that everything proceeds in a logical order. But the benefit of the table was that we were able to work forward sometimes and backwards at other times. So now let's go back to the writing up of the proof, writing up the formal proof, and I'm going to show you how I make use of this table in order to do it. Uh, I'm just simply going to show you the final proof, and we'll go over it um, sentence by sentence. Okay, here's the final version of the proof. As we've said before, this thing here determines that the first sentence of the proof should be, let x and y be integers. Since we're giving a direct proof of this conditional statement, this dictates that the second sentence of the proof should be, suppose that x and y are odd. Now we go to the table for the intermediate steps. And um, but notice that most of the things on the table are just written in symbols. So it's very important that you never begin a sentence with a symbol. It's considered to be very bad style, and um, it's very hard for the reader to understand the meaning of it if you begin with a symbol. So you always have to start a sentence with some kind of linking words. So this line here got translated into this sentence. Then, by definition, there exist integers r and s, such that x is 2r plus 1 and y is 2s plus 1. I had the right to say, then, by definition, because we had just asserted that x and y are odd. Now, the next sentence comes from these two lines here. I say, adding these equations gives this, which, after combining terms, be becomes this. Now I want to um, be able to say that, so now I want to make use of this thing here, and so I observe that, so I have to verify that this is even, and so I say, since this is an integer, it follows by definition that 2 times that integer is even. And so finally I have the right to say, therefore x plus y is even, because x plus y is equal to the thing that I've just asserted is, is even. Remember, we had said that the very last sentence should be, therefore, x plus y is even. So it's not, of course, necessary for your proof to look exactly like mine. You're going to write it up in your way. However, you must be sure that you write um, grammatically correct sentences. Um, everything you write in your proof should proceed in a logical order, so that everything you write is something that we know to be true, not something that you're trying to prove is true. Uh, when we get to much more complicated examples, we may not, we probably won't be using this table, but we're always going to make use of this step here of writing the original statement in symbols. We're going to find that step extremely useful in writing up proofs.